What up guys and welcome to week 2 of Rider Fest where we go over Fies, Blade, and Hibiki. I bring to you a video review of SIC Kiwami Tamashi Kamen Rider Hibiki. For a more detailed look into SIC Kiwami Tamashi or SIC in general, check out Giltar's introduction to SIC. It's a pretty informative video so if any of you guys were curious, I'll provide a link at the bottom if you guys missed the link at the screen next to Hibiki. This figure was brought to you by Bandai in January 2009 and was retailed for 1,000 yen, or roughly 11 US dollars, making this one of the cheapest SIC Kiwami Tamashi figures to date. SIC Kiwami Tamashi Kamen Rider Hibiki was also the first figure of this toy line to be released, as you can see the differences between the packagings for Hibiki on the left and Fies on the right. The packaging is also different in the sense that Kiwami Tamashi Hibiki's packaging is more closer in resemblance to an American toy packaging, as compared to the newer releases like Fies here, where seems to be more mm, reusable friendly. On the back you get some nice clean promotional photos showing off the levels of articulation and some of the accessories that Hibiki comes with. Up on the top right corner it shows series volume 1 and a running common theme with these figures is they have these two color coded boxes that represent the character. I guess purple and red would represent Hibiki. Like many other SIC figures the detailing on Hibiki is just outstanding. I love the paint apps on his body. He's got this nice metallic purple, uh, or blue, I'm sorry if I got the wrong color, but he's got this nice metallic sheen to it from head to toe, even the joints, no detail missed. His anklets are wonderfully sculpted. He's got silver and red, more silver and red on his upper body, and even his forearms are very detailed. His accessories are no exception as well, and I'll go over them in a second. His upper body is also very detailed. I love that silver. And the small paint app details on his face are just spectacular. No paint app fails here, guys. SIC really speaks detail. And this is just to get a closer look at his paint details on his face. Very nice. You can even get that golden oni on his forehead. If you pardon the epic crotch shot and focus more on the details of the buckle, we can go over some of Hibiki's accessories. This first piece here is the Yonkaku tuning fork, or tuning device I like to call it because it doesn't look much like a fork to me. It's attached onto his buckle. This buckle has three holes all around and each piece has a peg at the end so you can attach them easily and they fit in there. This next piece is, I'm not going to butcher the name, but he uses it to attach onto his enemies to summon a drum for when he wants to use his Ongekibo Reka drum sticks. These two pieces at the end are separate pieces and you'll see why in a second. These both pieces are also attached via peg and hole. Um, and you can also manipulate some of these pieces around if you'd like. When you want to have Hibiki holding his own Gekibo drumsticks, you replace this piece which was originally attached in the back in that hole. And you replace it with this piece. Because if he was holding his drumsticks, I guess it would have made sense that they were still back there. It's nice that they give you this little piece. Also, you gotta remember to detach both demon heads from the drumsticks in its stored form and attach them onto Hibiki's other accessory. Finally, Hibiki comes with an extra set of hands which have the Ongekibo drumsticks already molded into them, which is real nice because the parts would be really small and difficult to replace. Just pop off the stock hands or the default hands and replace them with this. Also, don't forget to put those demon heads at the tip. and now Hibiki is all armed. Now to go over Hibiki's articulation starting with his head, his head can rotate side to side, look down but not so much up because of the sculpted detail of a collar. His chest or his torso can sort of go up, not so much really, but it bends forward a little bit. He can also rotate side to side. His arms are pretty smooth and neat. They can rotate 360. You have a separate floating shoulder piece there to keep everything flush and smooth. You have a bicep rotation double joint at the elbow, you have a hinge there, and then a ball joint inside the forearm, so you can get a nice bend, and the wrists are uh, rotatable, they're not on ball joints, but you can rotate them. His legs are pretty nice, and probably the nicest parts of the figure that will enable you to do the best out of this. <laughs> they can swing out forward about that far, which isn't so much, but you'll see how that really doesn't matter. You also have a thigh rotation there, legs can kick up forward about that far, kick back about that far. And probably one of the nicest parts of the legs is this very smooth, organic, and very freaking awesome looking knee bend. That's real nice. And I like how they try to keep it consistent, uh, even with the amount of detail this figure has. His ankles, or his feet, are on three joints where you can rotate it up at the top there. 
you can tilt the feet down or up and there's also a joint where these jo where these uh, hinges meet inside the foot on top here so you can get a swivel so and that's useful for wide-legged stances when possible so articulation is pretty neat a lot of Hibiki's poses that you can pull off are very fluid looking and that's a lot to do with the sculpt and figure of Hibiki. He's very thin, very slender, but he's also got some muscles on top, you know, just to keep everything balanced because you don't want too skinny of a guy. But this guy looks absolutely amazing, very fluid posability. Never really tried to pose like this on an SIC figure before, but Hibiki looks really cool doing it. I don't think Hibiki has a full-fledged rider kick, unfortunately, but... This pose definitely makes up for it. Made possible by Tomashi Stage Act 4. Also some size comparisons. As you can see, Hibiki's legs are a little bit splayed out more than the Iron Man Mark 6 figure. Has about 3 and 3 quarter inch figure. So if his legs were a little bit more straight, he does stand a little bit taller than your average 3 and 3 quarter inch figure from Hasbro. Also not quite as tall as an SH Figure Arts and also not as tall as a 1 to 1 44th scale Gundam model kit. Maybe could be as tall as maybe your smaller Gundam 1 to 1 44th scale model kits. So he really only looks good with his SIC Kiwami Tamashi brethren. So overall, SIC Kiwami Tamashi Kamen Rider Hibiki is a very solid release, I believe. It comes with a lot of great detail, right from the top to bottom, maybe under the feet is a little bit lacking, but a it is a 1,000 1, 1000 yen figure, you know, $11 figure. Uh, it's very, very detailed, very articulate for what it is, uh, very detailed for what it is. Paint apps are great, so, and and you get to enjoy uh, the basic of Hibiki. I mean, you get a few accessories that mostly clip onto his buckle, which can be a little bit of a disappointment for some fans out there, or especially for some of you who are, aren't familiar with Hibiki. You're probably just looking at these drumsticks like, what am I supposed to do with them? Uh, if you haven't seen Hibiki, please do so. These drumsticks are the Ongekibo Reka drumsticks. They have a fire element to them, so he can shoot fire out of the drumsticks, and he can pretty much slay demons with these drumsticks. So if that's not a cool enough idea, then maybe Hibiki is not for you. Uh, but overall, I think it's a very great release, a very good way to introduce uh, new people to a new toy line. Uh, it's very solid, very affordable, more most affordable than the other SIC Kiwami Tamashu releases. Uh, it's definitely more affordable in general. Uh, what I like about the SIC Kiwami Tamashu subline is that they offer to the customers something that's very detailed, as detailed as their uh, much larger, more expensive counterparts, but for a more vo affordable and probably shelf-friendly uh, offering here. So, in the end, I have to give Hibiki a solid 10. It's a very good, once again, it's a very good way to start a, uh, a subline. Uh, if you really want to get into SIC Kiwami Tamashi, uh, this might be a good way for you. Um, but maybe this is only for the Hibiki fans, as the drumsticks might be something of a little disappointment for those who aren't familiar with Hibiki. Uh, but if it isn't the paint apps and the details and the articulation and posability that doesn't attract you, then maybe maybe this might not be the figure for you. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this review and found something helpful out of it in some way. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of Rider Fest.